car companies really do suck when it comes to protecting your personal data. How badly do they suck? Well, I'd suggest that most of them would have no problem whatsoever dysoning a freaking golf ball down 50 metres of half-inch garden hose. The most inequitable thing about them doing this, apart from putting your personal security at risk, is that your data actually has value, and yet car companies acquire it for free, and they make millions out of it. This doesn't seem fair, somehow. Car makers collect too much of your personal information continuously, it's badly secured, you have no control over it, and the majority of them, living up to their inner pimp-like natures, have no qualms whatsoever about whoring your private information out to the highest bidder, including scumbag data brokers, law enforcement, and unspecified third parties. This is not my personal opinion. It's independently verified. I'm John Logan from autoexpert.com.au, Newcastle Cheap, Australia only, website, card. Mozilla, the company that built the Firefox internet browser from 20 years ago, which made competitors quite cranky at the time, if memory serves, today operates as a kind of Marvel's Avenger online. In their recent car industry audit, the headlines kind of speak for themselves. It's official. Cars are the worst product category we have ever reviewed for privacy. That's from the Mozilla Foundation, September the 6th. Like, I don't know, the Wayne Foundation and Batman. This is kind of that. I know I just switched comic book universes from Marvel. Sorry. (laughs) Privacy nightmare on wheels. Every car brand reviewed by Mozilla, including Ford, Volkswagen and Toyota, flunks privacy test. Mozilla again there, same date. Hilariously enough, the Church of Automotive Scientology was beyond just terrible at this. Also known as Tesla, obviously. More on that in a sec. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Get four extra months of Nord free now at nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Say you're in a cafe one day and you think you've just connected to the free Wi-Fi. But in fact, a hacker has just inserted himself between you and the internet and he's about to start ripping you off properly. How would you even know? This is called a man-in-the-middle attack. It's one of the most common ways to get hacked. But there's no law that says you have to be the next victim. You need countermeasures, and that's what NordVPN does. NordVPN does the stuff that you and I don't understand in the background. Encrypting your data, hiding your IP address, locking everything down, basically. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. The two-year plan discount is huge right now. Plus, you're going to get four extra months free. nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Just subscribe, download the app and connect. One click later, your IP address is shielded, your online traffic is masked with NSA level encryption across as many as six of your devices. NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the planet. It costs only about as much as one cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. Because your location is masked, you'll be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel. You might even be able to score some great deals on travel and accommodation that are not available at home. That happens all the time. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now, boost your security and enjoy that discount plus those extra four months of free subscription time. It's totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC, link in the description, and thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. Back to Tesla now. Electric Jesus's baby was only the second entity ever to receive an official you suck from Mozilla in all evaluated privacy categories. The first was an AI chatbot reviewed 
earlier this year. So I guess in a sense, it's official. Tesla is just as malevolent as Skynet. Which is the third change in the sci-fi fantasy universe this episode. I do apologise, but I think on this one, I'll be back. I suppose it's only malevolence if you don't sip the Kool-Aid, right? If you do, it's really just Electric Jesus loving you and wanting to take you up to Electric Utopia. Just plug in and listen to the harps, dude. It's all good. But to be fair, 16 other car makers also properly suck almost as badly with their conduct in respect of your private data. And that's not a joke. Mozilla's list of mainstream car makers that suck includes Volkswagen. No real surprises there. I mean, this is a criminal organisation that thought it was quite okay to kill people prematurely with excess illegal pollution simply because they had, you know, overarching obligations to their stakeholders. This was enacted, of course, in a breathtaking criminal conspiracy, which is what Dieselgate was. And they're not sorry. They're sorry they got caught. Toyota and its lame attempt to fake Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, it's there. Toyota is, of course, the biggest manufacturer of automotive misleading or deceptive conduct in Australia. The company that broke the unbreakable Hilux. Oh, what a feeling. Ford and its Lexus, Lincoln. Ghost of Pinto, like, dude, enough said. Not really, not enough. Ford also hilariously thought it was a nice idea to run an illegal detention centre in which employees were tortured in Argentina. I could not make that up. And the most recent lawsuit over that that I could find was filed in 2006. So hardly ancient history. Audi's on the list as well, like Volkswagen for rich twats who... Don't get that it's just a Volkswagen, dude. <laughs> the four-ringed fake Volkswagen factory would need access to Big Brother's barbed wire privacy enema machine. I mean, that's only fair. Mercedes-Benz, apart from that, you know, unfortunate slave labour incident in World War II. And their capacity to delude themselves into thinking it's them doing you the favour, allowing you to sit behind the three-pronged badge I guess Mercedes-Benz is awesome. Also on Mozilla's number two list, Honda and its Lexus, Acura, Kia and its big sister, Hyundai, the barbershop quartet of GM, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC and Cadillac. And of course, Nissan, which has trouble locating its buttocks with both hands in a mirror on a good day. And... On a bad day, well, let's just say cleaning out the padded cell is not for the faint-hearted. Keeping it loose. Basket case. It's a euphemism, dude. According to Mozilla, popular global brands, including BMW, Ford, Toyota, Tesla, Kia and Subaru, can collect deeply personal data such as sexual activity, immigration status, race, facial expressions, weight health and genetic information and where you drive. Researchers found data is being gathered by sensors, microphones, cameras and the phones and devices drivers connect to their cars as well as by car apps, company websites, dealerships and vehicle telematics. Brands can then share or sell this data to third parties. Car brands can also take much of this data and use it to develop inferences about a driver's intelligence, abilities, characteristics, preferences, and more. So you think you're in a cocoon, right? A warm, comfy, safe space, listening to Celine Dion singing along. You're actually in a kind of digital North Korea, dude. In my estimation, what's happening here is not merely data collection. You are being properly spied upon. The very worst offender is Nissan. The Japanese car manufacturer admits in their privacy policy to collecting a wide range of information, including sexual activity, health diagnosis data and genetic data, but doesn't specify how. 
They say they can share and sell consumers' preferences, characteristics, psychological trends, predispositions, behavior, attitudes, intelligence, abilities, and aptitudes to data brokers, law enforcement, and other third parties. Not to be outdone, Hyundai is also quite happy, apparently, to throw you under the bus with the cops. That's not in the brochure. But sure as shit, it puts a whole new slant on such things as the right to silence and the concept of being innocent until proven guilty. None of the car brands use language that meets Mozilla's privacy standard about sharing information with the government or law enforcement, but Hyundai goes above and beyond. In their privacy policy, it says they will comply with lawful requests, whether formal or informal. That's a serious red flag. Yeah, it is. What's so freaking hard about putting the customer first by demanding to see I don't know, a warrant or a court order before dropping your trousers and just handing it all over, you corporate weasel fuckheads. Okay, so you might be wondering why this matters, and the reason is you might run some car maker app or you connect your phone to the car, which then logs the GPS data or sends the internal camera data back to the car maker central, activates the microphone and sends the audio back, whatever. There's some form of consent involved. You've got to tick a box, right? Like you go, yeah, I agree to letting the Hyundai, Nissan, whatever app have access to my phone's location data and the camera and the microphone. Like what harm can it do? Then the cops come knocking and Hyundai or Nissan go, eh, sure, he's just a customer, happy to remove his trousers for you vicariously. Here you go, dude. And take these donuts and some coffee on us. The cops go, thanks, and they use the data to put you on the grassy knoll on November the 22nd of 1963, and then you go away for JFK's murder, when in fact you were just driving down to Wendy's for a coffee. But there's a snippet of audio from the microphone where you admit that, quote, you never liked the guy. Prosecutors love that shit. The point being, this is an in-practice erosion of your common law right to silence and or to decline to consent to be searched or something similar. Alternatively, let's just say you might have been having meetings with Tiffany, the boss's secretary, to thrash out various human resources, policies and practices. And it just makes sense to hold those meetings off-site in a nearby CD motel, thus freeing up the conference room back at the office, which is, after all, heavily booked, all while the Nissan app is silently and continuously logging your, let's call it, uh, data. Not unlike the behaviour of the HAL 9000 AI in Space Odyssey which would be science, fiction, metaphor, and or simile number four. But who's counting? I do not want any car maker learning about the way Tiffany and I are planning on revolutionising the complexities of HR practices for the next few months. That's got to be held commercially in confidence. I just don't want to have to lock away all the knives at home again. There's no guarantee that any of your data stored on a car is encrypted. Mozilla can't tell, so ordinary mortals like us have bugger all chance of knowing, and that is the absolute minimum level of data protection that you would want. More than two-thirds of the car brands Mozilla tested have what Mozilla calls a, quote, bad track record for leaks, hacks and breaches that threaten their driver's privacy. Tesla says you can opt out of being spied upon while you drive at any time. But there's a catch. This may result in your vehicle suffering from reduced functionality, serious damage or inoperability. A direct quote from Tesla's customer privacy notice there. Even more big brother behavior now from those demented clowns at Nissan who say 
it's on you to inform anyone you take in your demented clown mobile. It's on you, dude, to inform them about the consequences of Nissan's privacy policy. You promise to educate and inform all users and occupants of your vehicle about the services and system features and limitations, the terms of the agreement, including terms concerning data collection and use and privacy and the Nissan privacy policy. And it's so simple. All you have to do is memorize a 9,461 weasel word document written by a person or people you almost certainly would not want to sleep with. Too easy, dude. The law needs to adapt to this brave new world by writing a new offence into the legislation urgently. Aggravated corporate weaselry needs to be a serious, indictable offence punishable by no less than 10 years in a single bed with Bubba. Or a ride down a 50-metre slippery slide made entirely of razor blades into a fenced-off section of the Great Southern Ocean full of starving great white sharks. If found guilty, you choose. Bubba or the Shark Tank. Awesome name for a reality TV show. If you opt for the Shark Tank and you make it back to shore, <laughs> you get unlimited skin grafts and a full pardon. The ultimate Section 10 challenge. That legislation and the broadcast rights would almost certainly make Australia less shit. And we must televise it. We must. It must become a weekly TV show. What an effective deterrent to would-be corporate weasels. Word would get around so quickly. I've already drafted the legislation. It's going to be my first bill in the bullshit factory when I am your next Prime Minister. The Bubba or the Shark Tank corporate weaselry countermeasures and good old-fashioned family entertainment bill 2024. Pretty sure we'd get bipartisan agreement on that one. Ultimately, I am all about the less shit, dude. <laughs>